Ken, do you have anything to say for yourself about this abomination, about this travesty that's in front of me right now? I didn't think so. Hey guys, this is Austin. This disaster that sits in front of me are some of the most popular PS4 accessories. Now sure, unlike a gaming PC which you can fully customize, a PS4 is pretty much what you get is, well, what you get. However, what I'm curious about is whether any of this stuff is remotely worth it. So to start with, we have the Nyko Intercooler. So they claim that this is going to direct hot air away from the console, which in theory is going to be a thing that actually could be really helpful. Especially with the old fat PS4, it could get really loud under load. So one of the things that drew me to the intercooler is that this actually is fairly well integrated into the PS4 design. So as you'll see in a second here, it basically just clips right on. And that's pretty much it. So what we can have here is it looks like one large fan and a couple of smaller fans. And the cool part is it actually has its own power pass through. So you don't need to turn this thing on or off or any extra cables. It should just go on the back. This just clips into place. Think. That actually integrates pretty well, I've got to say. So it's even the sort of same two-tone finish on the back. You still have access to all of your ports, and you can still plug in the power cable right here. Now I'm curious how well it'll actually work, but it's worth a shot. So if you're rocking the PS4 Slim or Pro, then Dolby has you covered. So this is the P4 Series Multifunctional Cooling Stand. We'll see exactly how multifunctional it really is. So the idea here is that not only can you actually get a stand, but you can also mount your controllers as well as some games all in the one stand. So here, <laughs> this is a little bit bigger. This part it can decrease the temperature for the PS4 effectively, improving its performance and decreasing the power loss. Power loss? So while these cooling products claim to lower the temperature of the PS4, that really shouldn't give you more performance. The real advantage and the thing I'm going to be looking for is if temperatures come down, in theory, fan noise should come down, and potentially longevity of your PS4 should be improved a little bit, but we'll see. So this is made for everything from the fat PS4 to the Slim to the Pro. So if you have a Slim, it drops in here, but if we have the Pro, we should just be able to get it in something like this. Actually, it fits pretty well. So there's nothing really holding it in besides friction. On the bottom, we do have those, wait, what? It's really only pulling a little bit of air from here? I mean, they look like reasonable sized fans, but how is that gonna drive any significant airflow into the PS4? Next up, we have something a little bit more simple. This is a PS4 USB hub. So, as the name suggests, it's pretty straightforward. It turns the two USB ports on the front of the PS4 into five. So this is specifically made for the fat PS4. So in the back, we have a pair of USB ports, and on the front, we have one USB 3, which is a pass-through, and four standard USB 2. It should be pretty much as simple as just lining it up, and that's it. Again, I appreciate how well this actually fits with the original design. So even with this and the intercooler, it doesn't really look like a Frankenstein. I mean, at least not yet. Now it's time for the big guns. This is the Donko Game Bar. Now, that name doesn't really tell you much, but what this is going to allow you to do is install a full desktop hard drive into your PS4. Infinity storage, super speed, dissipation, and stability. Man, I am excited for this one. <laughs> oh boy, here we go. Oh, that looks... That looks like a lot. So this is going to require just a little bit of surgery on our PS4. However, it's not going to be bad. So the PS4, as well as the PS4 Slim and PS4 Pro, all have removable hard drives. So what this is going to allow us to do is instead of using a small two and a half inch drive like from a laptop, to actually use a full desktop drive. This is feeling like a dumber and dumber idea each second. So, essentially this should kind of go and replace this top piece. So this glossy piece right here just pops right off. And inside, normally you would just replace the hard drive here. However, it's gonna be a little bit more involved with this guy. So to start, we're gonna take out the puny 500 gigabyte hard drive in favor of something just a little bit beefier. So to really go all out, we're upgrading this with a four terabyte hard drive. However, this actually supports up to six terabytes if you really need all the storage you can. On top of that, they actually just announced a new PS4 firmware update that will allow you to actually put games on external USB drives. So if you really want to get crazy with it, you can put a ton of storage in your PS4. So I just need to set the SATA cable in like that, and I can close the whole thing up. So all this is is really just a pass through. So once we're ready, we just slide it in to the standard PS4 slot and screw it in. All right, here goes nothing. So we want to run all of our power and data to this little slot. Get it around here. Okay. That, uh, that actually kind of works. Now we just need to drop the hard drive in like this. And it doesn't seem very stable, but besides that, we just have to attach the cable 
And in theory, we pretty much have a four terabyte PS4. Uh oh, it totally fits. <laughs> we have created a monster. Dude, if this is about to work, I'm gonna be so happy. It totally fits. <laughs> this is, I gotta say, this might be the proudest moment of my entire life. This is a masterpiece of elegant Japanese engineering. Or, um, that's all Ken's fault. So, one quick firmware update later, we have the ultimate Frankenstein PS4 up and running. And as you can hear, it's kind of loud. We also have the Energizer Extra Life for the controller. So this is a dock that comes with an external battery that clips on the bottom of the controller. So it doesn't really get in the way when you're actually playing a game. First thing, I wanna check to see if our storage is here. So, yep, there we go. 3.51 terabytes of free space. Now with so many PS4s shipping with a 500 gigabyte hard drive, it can really get cramped quickly. So this is Uncharted 4, and it looks, well, exactly like Uncharted 4. So what I'm curious about are the temperatures. I can pretty confidently say that this is louder than a normal PS4, but I'm curious whether that loudness actually does anything. So the PS4 with the intercooler and the cooling stand topped out around 49 degrees with the exhaust. However, when you take all that stuff off and run it, it tops out at about 50. That shouldn't be a huge surprise. So the intercooler is just adding additional fans for the exhaust. It's still restricted by how much intake air can actually get into the PS4. Now the cooling stand in theory would actually help things by giving it some fresh air. However, the actual intakes themselves are tiny and really not able to make a big difference. So is any of this worth it? Kind of. So first of all, the Energizer Extra Life dock is actually not bad. The dock itself is clean, but most importantly, the battery doesn't get in the way and legitimately does give you extra time on the PS4. Which brings us to the game bar. So on one hand, it actually works really well. Once you get past the setup, it's completely seamless. And if you really do need four or six terabytes of storage with your PS4, then it's kind of a no-brainer. However, if you don't need that much storage, it's a lot easier to just install a one or two terabyte hard drive. And on top of that, the update to allow you to put games on a USB drive is coming soon. I do really like the USB hub. So with the PS4 only having two USB ports, especially if you have something like PlayStation VR set up, those ports disappear quickly. Which brings us to the intercooler and the cooling stand. Don't buy these. The intercooler, while it actually does integrate pretty well and doesn't really hurt anything, I'm not convinced it actually makes any difference whatsoever. Now the stands does give you a few options like being able to dock your controllers, as well as in theory giving you a little bit more cooling, but again, I don't really believe it's actually making any significant difference. As always, all the links you guys need to any of this stuff will be in the description if you wanna go check it out. And I'm curious, what do you think about this monstrosity? Let me know in the comments below and I will catch you in the next one.